Fox News alert now. North Korea on notice. President Trump appearing ready to take action against the rogue regime at this hour, tweeting this, quote, just heard foreign minister of North Korea speak at the U.N. If he echoes thoughts of little rocket man, they won't be around much longer. But are Americans ready for military action? Here to weigh in is uh, U.S. Army Green Beret Terry Shepard. Uh, Terry, you see where we are right now. This is we're in unprecedented territory. Some in South Korea are worried. And in Japan, they're wondering where this is going. Where do you think we're going with this? First of all, let me tell you this, Kilmeade. I know you're ducking me in New York, and I'm in an undisclosed location in North Carolina, so you'll right. see me soon. Right. I will find yeah. you. He's I know like, yeah. how to, okay? That's right. I have skills. Hey, listen, uh, nothing should be surprising about what's going on with North Korea. I mean, this is where it was going to be. Uh, Victor Davis Hanson, who is one of my favorite writers in National Treasure, wrote an article a while ago talking about what if this is the other way, like America was in control of a rogue state that was... Uh, belligerent to all of our uh, China's allies, and, and how long would that go on? There would have been a war already. So, I mean, there's a lot going on. We have the Second Infantry Divisions there. There's a lot of conventional forces, uh, but this is good. this would have had to have been done sooner or later. And so, yeah, it's 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 edgy and it's a, a bit scary, but. This has to be done. At least in some way, he has to be put in his place. Right. And right now, if you ask the American people about this, because he does have nuclear weapons, they were asked, and they say 58 percent right. favor using dipl diplomatic efforts first, 35 percent are opposed to doing it. We're at the point now, though, Terry, is whoever was the 45th president would be dealing the same way. But some in the State Department are worried about the bellicose tone of the president. Are you? Uh, no, I'm not that worried about it. Listen, uh, President Trump's going to be President Trump. This is how he's going to be. He's always been this way. I actually kind of filter out a lot of the way he says stuff or even what he says. But you bring a good point. Someone, whoever was in charge right now would have to deal with this. I think President Trump's at least strong stance is the right way to go because it's gotten us nothing to this point. You know, we've placated them. We've played games with them. And uh, we've got nothing for it except more threats to, to us and, of course, our allies, which are very important to us. And we can't discount that. So ignore the talk. I tell people in the U.S., please just ignore the talk and just watch what the president does. More importantly, watch what our enemies do in response to him. That's what really matters. Terry, you know, overwhelmed because of this NFL stuff over the weekend. But last week was a great week for the president and making diplomatic inroads with some of the people we need to put the pressure on North Korea, namely China. That's what I sense. He's building up the personal relationships just eight months in. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, man. I mean, here's the thing. China, you know, North Korea has been China's pit bull for, for quite a long time now. And, and China knows this. But China also has a good gig dealing with the West. And they realize if North Korea goes too far, that money, that gig, that's going to go away. So eventually this is going to work in China's interest to, to, to curb North Korea. And I think, again... People don't realize that part of the world values strength. It values, you know, someone with an iron fist behind it. And right. before this, we haven't had a president who was really that way. And I'm glad you put your personal animus towards me to the side to talk about North Korea. Thank you very much. I, you know, I did, Brian, because, you know, you and I are co sort of friends, and right. I, I want to maintain that. I know. Somehow, some way, we'll, we'll weather the storm. Thanks so much, Terry. Uh, you know, when you hear about the back and forth with the North Koreans and how aggressive they've been lately, and you're in the East Coast or the middle of the country, you're probably not all that worried. However, you're in Hawaii, well, you're worried, because it wouldn't take much for uh, a missile to reach you. On the phone with us, a Republican Hawaii State Representative Gene Ward. Representative, very good to have you. Thank you for taking the time. What do you make of these latest battles back and forth, and now the North Koreans say we've all but declared an act of war, both in our language and in our reconnaissance operations uh, in areas that we have not been in, you know, in decades. What do you think? Well, what Hawaii is trying to do is walk a delicate line between being in denial and not being an alarmist. And we feel that ignorance is fear. So what we're trying to do is educate the population. We had a briefing last week. We're going to go out into a speaker's bureau getting basically a message of three things. If there's any explosion, any missile... It's get inside, stay inside, stay tuned. And, Neil, what people have to know, we only have a short window here in Hawaii. We're about 20 minutes away from a missile, but only about 12 to 15 minutes before we actually get warned about it. So we don't have shelters. We don't have the opportunity to do that. We are just now being prepared. Being aware is being prepared, and that's all we're doing. We're not overreacting, but, look, you guys in the mainland got to realize this. The July 4 missile showed that he can go to Alaska, the West Coast, 
possibly even into the Midland. So what Hawaii is doing, I think, is what basically the mainland has to be doing, not being in denial, thinking, well, we're so far away. Technologically, yeah, maybe Hawaii is in, in, in closer proximity, but inevitably, if this guy does what he says he's going to do, I think we all need to be prepared and be aware. Um, what are your thoughts of the way we have been reacting to, to, to the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un? Now, they take great offense to the way the president referred him as rocket man, that they would, the president would, would be very aggressive and destroy North Korea, that this type of language has, has made things more agitated, uh, never mind the provocative behavior the North Koreans have shown. But, but what do you make of this? How do you dial this down, or can you at this point? You know, you've got to remember, this started 50 years ago. You're absolutely right. With, you know, the, end of the, the, quote, end of the Korean War to now, uh, Hawaii was placed on a map of death along with Benderburg and Barksdale, where the B-52s are, in 2013. But because of appeasement, i.e. strategic patience, and what I would call weak intelligence, we're suddenly now trying to play catch-up. You know, on July 4, when they sent the missile over, it was saying that the Defense Intelligence Agency said, hey, well, we've probably underestimated their technology by five years. That is embarrassing and unacceptable. we got to get better intelligence, and basically the appeasement of the last three administrations just didn't cut it. So we really underestimated this guy. And so the rhetoric today is, to me, is a, a sideshow. This has been going on for decades, and we've never faced the music. Now we have no choice but to do what we're doing. Do you think he would act militarily, the, the, the Kim Jong-un? You know, the, it's a cheap analogy, but it's a wildly barking dog inside of a house warning the elephant surrounding it not to enter, or he'll come out and bite and kill one of us. He doesn't see the perception of what he's trying to do. I think in the analogy used to be mad, mutually assured destruction. He wants equilibrium. But I think it's going to be sad, which is basically the, the suicidal assured destruction. The guy cannot win. So what he's trying to do, you know, he's got a GDP of $1,800 a year per capita. The guy's got no economy. He's got no fellowship other than through fear. Right. He's trying to push is just beyond uh, comprehension. All right. Represent, be safe, be well. Thank you for the heads up on everything. But you're right. Prepare people for the worst.